When I was young, my brother and I built a boat with our father. We spent several years sailing and exploring the Patuxent River. And then I met Tony. Peter and I spent many happy times on that boat. And so when we got married, we built a larger boat and ventured out into the Chesapeake Bay and its many rivers. We crewed on larger boats with dreams of sailing the world, but then life took another turn. Today, we look forward to retirement with dreams of leaving it all behind. Come join us on our journey to sail the seas. Hi, welcome to episode five of Sailing with No Agenda. And today, we're gonna play with numbers. We're gonna play with these numbers. The assumption is that we're gonna to try to reduce our first three payments to seawind and maximize our, the, the last payment in case we need to take a loan out. This will get us there. Um, so let's get to it. Let's play with these numbers. Anyway, let's play with some numbers. This is a spreadsheet that I created uh, to play out various financial scenarios with retirement withdrawals, t income taxes, and see when boat payments. I do have a disclaimer in here. I don't make any guarantees about this spreadsheet. I built this spreadsheet for my own personal use, but I think I will share it and post a link on the bottom uh, if somebody else wants to take it and make modifications. Let's go through this really quickly. Um, I have various tabs on here. We have the data entry tab. Uh, this is where you enter your values. We have the planned retirement income, the, the C1 cost, estimated shipping, uh, your IRA balance or any type of retirement balance, your financial uh, obligations for the C1 options and estimated wages. Um, this tab shows you all the numbers that you want to see in, in the scenarios and we'll go through this a little bit in more detail. The payment one shows you the, the payment schedule. Remember the CWIN has four payment schedules. Uh, the idea is to reduce your first three so you can finance the fourth. The boat is built in Vietnam um, and you're it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get a loan for the draws for a boat that's being built in Vietnam. And we have payment two, payment three, payment four. A tax rate, this is uh, pretty important. This is where you enter your tax information. For most people in the United States, the federal tax rate should be uh, the same. This is a Maryland tax table here. Uh, if you live in Florida, you wouldn't have to worry about it, or Tennessee and Texas. Uh, they don't pay taxes, state taxes. Uh, but you could either put zeros here or, or your state tax uh, rates. In Calvert County, um, the tax rate is 3%. And this is something that I put here, uh, sort of like a financial calculator, um, to play with different scenarios. So if I said I was going to make uh, 132000 um, then it kind of gives me an estimate of, of my various taxes. The finance tabs, finance five is for five years, shows you the details, and we'll talk about more in, in a minute. Finance 10, finance 15, finance 20. And then if we keep bebopping over, uh, we have the five-year animation schedule, the 10-year, the 15-year, year, the 15 year, and the 20-year. I didn't take it out of 20-year. So let's get started. Let's enter some values here. We bebop back over to the data entry, and we're going to start here. Going through this, I color-coded some of these cells, the, the cells in green is data that you enter. The cells in this burnt orange are static values, and the cells in the blue are computed values. So to plan retirement, this is the amount of money you think you need to retire, and you have to keep your cost of living, slip fees, boat insurance, all that in, in consideration. Um, and this is used to later compute various tax information. So 50000 I don't know. I think I'm going to bump this up to, I'm going to be very optimistic. And this is married filing jointly. Um, if you're not married or filing jointly, you can just put single values here. So I'm going to say $78,000. Um, the C1 1260 without any options is currently running $430,000. Uh, we know that. Um, the estimated shipping, I'm estimating to be... 35,000. It's really crazy during COVID with all these uh, ports being backed up, but I'm hoping that when it's my turn, that sanity returns back and everything will be back to normal. The commissioning fee, I'm roughly estimating 20,000. I really don't know what it's going to be. We're kind of far away out. I don't know all the options, but for now, I'm planning on 20,000. In Maryland, it's a sales tax. They cap your sales tax. So no matter how much your boat costs, eventually once you hit a certain value, it's capped. So I will be paying fifteen thousand six hundred dollars uh, in the state of Maryland. They just raised it six hundred bucks just for me for twenty twenty one. I'm sure it's going to go up. Taxes never really come down. Sea Wind does have a down payment 
twenty thousand dollars if you're in line you know you paid it and then here's an interesting number this is the c one with the final options so you have four hundred thirty dollars cost up here the initial cost and then once you add uh, all the options and everything's an option in a C1, then the final cost might be $495,000. I, I just pulled this number. Um, we, we can make it any. Let's make it a, a 485. Maybe we don't want all the options. Um, the projected retirement balance. This is what you project to start out in your retirement balance fund. Um, for the purpose of the spreadsheet, I treat this value as static. Uh, your retirement investments can go up and it can go down. So you really need to keep an eye on it. Um, we can leave this. Let's make this 600000 uh, because of what's going on in D.C. and the ludicrousy. Um, I'm estimating a loan interest rate or planning for 5%. If you can get better, you can change the, the loan interest rate here. The estimated wage growth is... I'm estimated to be 2.5, and why is that important? Because I'm not retired yet, so I'm planning on working <clears throat> until I retire and get this boat. So these are the estimated wages, and I'm going to bump this down to, I don't know, 1, 10. I'm not using my real numbers here, obviously. These are just demo numbers. And once you enter that, these numbers here are computed. They add the 2.5. So in 2024, I'm estimating that that I will have an adjusted, adjusted gross income, or me and my wife will have an adjusted gross income of 118457 So this is where all the information is entered. And then we can go over to the planning numbers and get a rough idea. This spreadsheet, you can see a lot of these numbers have transferred over. So we have the, the commissioning fee, the shipping fee, the Maryland state tax. Uh, I classify these three as out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, you can finance it, you can pay it out of savings, whatever. These are above and beyond the cost of a C-1-1260. And again, these are estimates. estimates. Uh, the 1260 initial price, the down payment, the remaining cost prior to final options. This is the cost of the C-1-1260 minus the down payment, so you end up with 410. It computes the final options as... Uh, Increasing the cost of fifty-five thousand, so your final purchase price with all the options will be four eighty-five. Um, total with cost, shipping, and commissioning, it's five thirty-five. We said our projected IRA starting balance. So all these numbers are carried over from the previous spreadsheets. Scrolling down, we can kind of see it. And don't worry about these dates. I left dates in here. Um, these dates are going to change for your boat, but the time period between the dates are going to be roughly the same. So I left them in here just so people will understand. Uh, the, the frequency of these payments. See when's payment schedule, 30% down when the first, pay, first payment is due. When the hull is laid, that's 30%. Second is when the hulls and the decks are attached, that's 20%. Third payment, uh, when the windows go in, and the final payment when it, the boat is shipped. Um, these are computed, so this, for your first draw, you would need 123000 Second and third draw, 82000 and the final is 178 Now remember, this is... This, the final payment is the 30% of your initial contract. And then when you come back and add the options as addendums, um, the last payment will be the 30% plus the outstanding balance. So this is why this is long. And this is what you want. You want this last payment to be highest in case you have to finance it. It's tough to finance these payments here. Um, but the last payment you should be able to finance because the boat's built at that time. Um, don't worry about the actual amount. Um, uh, we need to refine these numbers, and we'll get to that. And these are the final payment scenarios, and we'll refine these numbers as well. Moving over to payment one. This is where we ref refine some of our numbers. <clears throat> this is our estimated wages. Remember, we're still wor working. Um, this is the payment goal of the first payment, 123. But this is the, what, we're, what we need to compute here is the amount of money we need to draw from our retirement funds. And the goal is to get close to this, right, to reduce our taxes. Remember, we're adding this money to the estimated wages, which will change our tax bracket. So right now, if I took 182000 out of retirement, I will have a payment of 124497 which is a little bit higher here. So we can adjust this number. I don't know the backwards formula. So you can play with this number to refine this number to as close over here. So if we say, well, let's... 
that's too high. Let's take 181,000 out. Um, you can see that drops it down to 123, the gold over here. So we can twiddle with this number again and say 180. Yeah, it just gets us close. You know, if we took a, a draw out of 180, we'll end up roughly with 123,152, which will more than satisfy the payment goal of 123 by 152 bucks. So the actual payment here goes to 123 because that's what we we're striving for. So if we go back to the planning numbers, you will see the actual amount here, 123,152. Going back to payment one, we can take a look at it. If we weren't taking any draws out because we weren't buying a boat, we would end up at a 22% marginal with effective of 14.27. But because we're taking the, the draw out, our tax rate really is going to jump up to 24% marginal and 19.88. And all these are computed so you have an understanding of what the first draw is. Let's move on to payment two. Payment two is 82,000. Um, so we need to total with this number as well because um, 83 is too much. So let's start off with 120, 82, 550. That's still off. So we can actually twiddle with this again. See where we are with 119. That's just not enough. So what about 119, 5? And that gets us 217 off the goal. The tax rate is still adjusted. And it's, this is kind of upsetting. Um, you have to draw 119 out, five, 119,500, in order to pocket 82,217. Now remember, we never paid taxes on this income, so we could have paid taxes when we earned it way back when. Um, but now we pay the piper. Payment three, which is again 20%, but payment three is going to be slightly different because remember that we assumed that our income uh, here was adjusted by 2.5%. So we'll have to total with this number a little bit more. So we're, we're going to start again with 120. That gets us 470, 70 off. Let's total more. 119. 7. Ah, close enough, 275. This is a little bit more because we have to draw a little bit more because we made a little bit more with the 2.5% increase. Should make sense, right? Let's go to payment four. Payment four is a big one. This is the one that hurts. You might not be able to have this. Um, but our goal is to get 177 out here. Obviously, you, 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 this draw is too much because we don't need, we only need 177. So let's just start out with 260. See where that gets us. Gets us close. There's got to be a backwards formula here. That's too much. Oh, nope, it's 2,000 too less. So we'll just keep increasing this. And this is it, 268. So we have to draw 268 in order to get 177, which is just slightly over that. This is interesting, you know, the tax rate will jump up to 32%. So we go, it's it's a big hike here. Um, but the idea is to spread the four payments out over four years to minimize this, this tax bracket here. Again, just reviewing this tax bracket here, it's a big jump from 24% to 32%, not big jump to 35, not a big jump to 37. By the time you add Maryland stuff in there, you really want to stay out of the 40% range if you can help it. So let's go back to our planning numbers. These numbers are now tweaked, so we can look at these payment schedules. These haven't been adjusted. So these are, are going to be our IRA draws, our IRA balances here. Remember, we assumed that the IRA balance is going to remain static. It could go up, it could go down, depending on what the stock market and your investment strategy is. Um, but by the time we get to the fourth payment, we're, we're going to, we notice that we're going to be uh, 87,202 short. We will run out of funds in, in our projections here. Um, so that's interesting. We can go down here and we can look at uh, some more numbers. Final payment is going to be 268. This is just carried from here. The taxes we're going to pay is 90,000, but we don't have the funds in the IRA balance here. So let's look at some financing options. Um, if we had financed this over five years, we would have, the total draw over the five year period would be 351,000. <clears> that's 
more than 268,000 short term. Our taxes would be 99,000. Our IRA balance will drop to 170 uh, over the course because this is a whole lot more money here if we finance it. And the tax plus interest, this is what we would pay. Um, right here, this is what we would pay um, over the course. 122. Up here, we would pay 90,000. So you have to weigh this out. Um, there's no interest up here, um, but there is interest down here. So if we just skip over, and the same is for the other payments. If we pay, have payments for 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years, you can see over the long term, the withdrawal on your retirement is going to go up. Um, your taxes over the course of the 10 years, 15 years. Now, these costs are spread out. So this is total for 10 years, 15 years. But your total cost uh, for the year is, is, is going to continue to go up. There's really not going to be a tax write-off. So if we bebop over to the amortization schedule, if we go to the five years, your amortization is going to be the first. Uh, your highest interest rate is going to be your first year, and then your interest rate is going to go down. So if we just total up the first payments for a five-year, we know this isn't going to be enough. It sums up to $8,140.49. Um, the standard federal deduction is $25,100. So unless you have a lot of itemizations, um, this is not going to help you. This is not going to be a tax write-off if you try if you claim it as a home. You have to have a lot more uh, itemizations in order to make this work. The ten-year, we should see a little bit more. Uh, this goes up to eight five forty-nine. Again, nowhere near enough. Fifteen-year. What about fifteen years? Um, Twelve. Nope, goes up to eight six eighty-two. And even when we get to twenty-year, um, it goes up to 8747. So you're not going to be if you finance it and claim it as second home without a lot of itemizations and you remember you're in retirement, you're not going to be able to write this interest off on any loan. So let's go back and play out another scenario really quickly. We bebop back over to the data entry. Let's change some of these numbers and see how it changed the overall picture. Plan retirement income, uh, 70,000 seems generous. I'll we'll knock that down to 60,000. Remember, this is for two people. Total adjusted to see when 1260 initial option is going to remain the same. These values are going to be the same, but I, I, I want air condition. I want water maker. I want radar. So I'm going to just bump this up to 525 uh, with the additional options. Um, and I'm going to say uh, maybe the stock market's doing better than I projected. So that gives me an extra 700,000. The loan interest, everything else, I'm going to remain the same. The, the wages, I, I wish my wages would grow. Remember, these are just demo numbers. So we enter these numbers in. We're going to go back to payment one and refine this right out of the bat. Uh, notice that the first, even though we changed the number because the, the initial payment schedule is based off the 430 because we came back and added options later, these numbers should not change. We can see that here. We see that here. We see in payment three, the only numbers really we expect to change is payment four. And our payment goal is 217 because we added so much to the last payment. We're going to have to tweak this number uh, by quite a bit. So let's just start off with 300 and see where that gets us. Nowhere close. We're getting there. Let's try 340. Still not there. Wow. Jump, jump the shark here. Didn't make it. But we're getting closer. Ah, so it's going to be. I'm going to just jump it up to. Uh, even that's too much. We're going to refine this number. I'm telling you, we're just going to refine it. So as close as possible. What happens if we just come down to 200? That's it. 273.92, 354. We're only a couple bucks off. So this is the refined number. I one day I'll figure out the reverse formula here, but for now, this is what it is. So this is the payment that we would have to, uh, the final payment we would have to finance. Um, 
it does change the these numbers here um, the total interest let's go to the amortization schedule and see if it does anything here the payments do increase our interest is just under 10,000 nowhere near enough to inspect it would be there's no reason to go any further um, so I'll go back to the planning number and let's see what it changes there um, the final boat cost again assuming that the out-of-pocket these are the total taxes um, this is a discerning number here this is what we're paying um, for the boat for up here after taxes and everything so that's the price of doing business I guess um, the payments out here first three payments didn't change the final payment did um, so we're going to see where we increased our retirement by, by 100,000 700,000 still not gonna be enough in this scenario so if you look at financing here you can start playing out with some of these finance situations and you can see the total tax and interest is not that much more than the taxes up here now from playing around with this I know you can play and tweak these numbers uh, where the, the, the finance for over five years would be total less than the taxes uh, if you just paid out of pocket, assuming that the tax rate stayed low or, or didn't increase dramatically. Um, I never got the numbers to really work out over 10, 15, 20 years. Now remember, you don't have to finance the last payment entirely. You can just finance the 56 because that's what you're short here. So anyway, that's the spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to post a link down here. You can change it, tweak it, whatever. I'm not responsible for this. I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a financial guru. Do not claim to be. But if you want to play around with numbers and try various scenarios, feel free to use it. But consult somebody who knows more about finances than I anyway, do. Anyway, that was the spreadsheet, playing with numbers. Uh, it really helped me out a lot, playing with different scenarios and, and, and looking at the tax implica implications. It worked out really well. Now, we're quite not there yet. The stock market's always in a flux. You know, it could go up, it could go down. Uh, the tax situation in D.C., you don't know how that's going to end. It never ends well for the taxpayer. Um, but going back, what would we do different? We could have possibly chartered while still working if we had started sooner with the idea of um, buying the boat and understanding all of this ahead of time. Putting a boat in, in charter uh, would have helped with some of these finances, uh, definitely. Gave us a little bit more tax write-offs. Rolling over into the Roth IRA. That would have been smart. That would have helped when the tax rates went down about four years ago. The problem with rolling into a Roth is you can't touch, mo that, touch that money for five years. So, that's so it's too late for too us, late for but us. not for you if you're thinking about that. But think about it quick, because it's on the chopping block with this latest bill in front of Congress, this, this tax bill. They might take that, that option away. And I think another thing I would have done is uh, done a better job of talking into selling house. Uh, and I'm not quite ready somewhere. yet, but yeah. I might be more willing in the future when we're sailing more. <laughs> uh, in the end, I, I think we'll do a combination of some type of retirement withdrawals, savings. spending some of the savings, and, and, and maybe some loans or something. selling the house, too. Or possibly selling the house. Uh, we want this boat. Barring anything horrifically wrong, we're, we're going to do what it takes to get to, to realize our dreams. This... You want to say something? I was going to say, it's the, and what's also true is once we're on the boat and we are sailing, and that's going to be our lifestyle, so we're not going to be at the house very often. That's true. So. Um, this was a long video, yes. the longest one we've done. It was full of numbers, which is probably quite boring. Um, if you like numbers, give us a thumbs up. If you liked the video or if it helped you in any way, give us a thumbs up. If it was the most boring video, Give us, Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. I mean, it was the most boring. Come on. Anyway, my name's Peter. And I'm Tony. And we hope to be sailing one day with, with no agenda. With no agenda. See you later.